Hi, hello everybody. Welcome again to another session of one question a day. The question that we are going to do today is the mandibular first premolar. Morphology of mandibular first premolar. A very rarely asked questions, but you cannot allow to ignore this important tooth in the oral cavity. To jump into the answers, the mandibular first molar are present posterior to the mandibular canines and anterior to the mandibular second premolar. They are the premolar form in the lower arch, transition, and they resemble partly the mandibular canals and are smaller in size than the mandibular second premolar. They are a transition tooth like your canine. They are a transition from canine to mandibular second molar and mandibular second molar is more looking towards a molar form than to the canine form. So it's a gradual transition. So the first evidence of the chronology, the first evidence of calcification around 1.75 to 2 years. Enamel completion takes about 5 to at the age of about 6 years. Eruption is around 10 to 12 years, depending upon the gender. The root completion happens 2 to 3 years later. The dimension, 8 dimensions has to be mentioned. The length of the crown, length of the root, mesiodistal of the crown, at the cervix, labiolingual, the depth of the curvature, all has to be mentioned. Then going into the important aspect, namely the, you have to go in order, the buccal aspect. The crown is bilaterally asymmetrical, meaning when you divide the tooth, you cannot, uh, both halves do not resemble each other. The buccal cusp is larger and pointed and you see one large cusp. The shape of the crown is trapezoid in nature with the smallest of the arm lying along the you know, cervical line. The labial surface is more convex when compared with that of the maxillary promola. The root is cone-shaped and is shorter than that of the mandibular canine. Occlusal, uh, now we'll go into the detail of the buccal. So, this is a diagram that shows the entire tooth in single thing. You have a long buccal, you have a single tooth, a single cusp, which, is, which has a large buccal cusp with the central buccal ridge. It has, the mesial surface has is straight from the cervical line. The semicircular semi shaped cervical line is very prominent and from that along the mesial outline, it is straight till the contact area, which is at the middle third junction of the occlusal and the middle third. And from there, it forms a straight, short mesial soap, after which it forms a blunt cuspal tip, then takes a long distal slope with a mild concavity. The long distal slope is not straight, but a mild concavity mild concavity, long distal slope and short mesial slope and reaches the contact area where it undergoes a mild concavity. So deeply placed semicircular cervical line straight to the contact area where it forms a straight short mesial scope, blunt cuspal tip after which long distal slope that is mild concavity till the distal contact area which is at the mid, uh, middle third then fo follows a mild concave part to reach the cervical line. There is a single root visible that is mesially straight till the, mid uh, till the middle third. It uniformly tapers and towards the apical third there is a slight mesial, mild mesial inclination and like other tooth which has usually a distal inclination in lower first premolar there is a mesial inclination. The distal root up is straight till the middle, then slightly convex to join the apical region. It is slightly convex. So here both sides till the middle third, it is straight. After which there is a concavity here. Here the concavity in the mesial and convexity in the uh, distal line. So this is the buccal surface. Now going into the Palatal surface, you find the crown to be trapezoid as in the buccal side. The outlines are very similar to that of buccal thing, but you find a prominent developmental groove called the mesiolingual do present over the mesial marginal ridge. Along the lingual aspect, you find the mesial marginal ridge here. Mesiolingual groove. Okay, the outlines are very similar to that, but there is a lingual taper slight lingual taper along the entire because of the lingual convergence. So you have a prominent buccal ridge, the triangular fossa is there, the small lingual cusp is seen. You find the both the triangular fossa. This is because from the lingual aspect, the lingual cusp is small. So you see the most of the occlusal surface of your 
premolar. So the characteristic force is the mesiolingual groove. The root is uniform, taper on either side with the lingual tilt. So now going into the mesial surface. Mesial surface is characteristic. Again, it is a rhomboid form with all sides moving more or less equal. And it, the contact area is present in the middle third of the crown and positioned little more buckly than area is more buckly. And the buccal outline is has a cervical line, prominent cervical line with a convexity facing the crown and concavity facing the root. From the cervical line along the buccal outline, it is uniformly convex. It is uniformly convex, uniform convexity is seen. And the cervical crest is very prominent and a single cusp, both the cusps are relatively seen. The, the mesial marginal ridge is marred by the mesiolingual developmental groove that you can see. And the lingual cusp is not as much as well developed as the buccal cusp. And this lingual outline is uniformly mildly convex, mildly convex. So as compared to the buccal cusp, the lingual cusp is not so well developed. The root form, again going into that single root with broad tapering, convex on the buccal outline and con straight in the lingual outline till the middle third from the cervical line. Then after follows a convexity, has a convexity. There is a central developmental groove that has facilitated the development of the second premolar. Then going to the distal aspect, it's again the same thing except that the development groove is shallow and cervical nodes shows less curvature, nearly flat, not so prominent, okay? More prominent distal margin and ridge as compared to the thing. So much of the occlusal part is not seen. Here it is uniformly convex, the buccal outline. Lingual is uniformly convex convex till the middle and after which straight taper and developmental groove is seen. With that, we finish the distal surface. Now going into the occlusal concept, find two prominent cusps. The crown is roughly diamond shaped shows a lingual prominent tilt. There is a buccal and a lingual cusp. The lingual cusp is not so developed. So we have the fossa of the mesial area and distal fossa, the buccal triangular ridge, lingual triangular ridge, mesiobuccal cuspal ridge, distobuccal cuspal ridge, mesial marginal ridge, distal marginal ridge. The grooves are the mesiolingual development groove, mesiobuccal developmental groove, distobuccal developmental groove, and central developmental groove along the occlusal table and the other you find a central pit, okay, two marginal ridges and an oblique ridge running across. That's it. And you need to talk about the uh, four pulp horns, three in the buccal, middle, mesial, distal, buccal, then the prominent lingual, which has developed into the lingual cusp. Embrasure contact area we have discussed earlier that has to be separately mentioned. With that, we bring to an end to the oh, mandibular first premolar discussion. Stay connected with this channel for more detailed question. Till we meet again, happy learning, learn incrementally. At least one question a day.